this was about 10 to 12 years ago, I just started to reconnect with my, with my parents, my, my heritage. And so I'm walking in Old Delhi, which is the Muslim part near the Jami, Old Jami Mosque. I don't know if any, anyone's been there and seen that. A uh, very historic, you know, tr ancient area, old, uh, hundreds of years old. And around it is this like bustling marketplace. And, you know, things are very run down. They don't, they, you know, the, the, the Muslim situation there is not like it used to be in the past. And, you know, due to a lot of different things. And there's a cacophony of noises. You know, you're hearing like chickens. You're, you're, see, you know, you're hearing uh, rickshaws honking and cars and people yelling and hawk, hawking items. And there's all these, there are all these smells in the air. There's the dust. There's like the biryani that's cooking here. And there's some other bad smells. And all kinds of things are happening around you in your senses. And as I was walking through that with my backpack and just, you know, I just hear, you know, back in the, in the days in those countries, you have like these shops that sell musical cassettes and they're blaring like stuff from their shop to get you to come inside. And they've got all these different cassettes and CDs and everything. And as I was passing by, um, I'm hearing a Qawwali, right? I wasn't too familiar with Qawwali at that time. I wasn't too open to it as well, but that's a different story. But the thing is, I was walking by, and so I hear this playing, and I'm not familiar with them, right? Um, but because my parents speak Hindi, so I understood some of their language. It's very close to Urdu. So I, I turned around with, in, with the noise, and I look around, and there is a, uh, a poor man with Down syndrome sitting in the dust, literally on the street in India, which is just all these cars coming around. And he was sitting with a card in almost inside a cardboard box. And the flap of it was up. And he was taking the flap of it and pumping it back and forth like a harmonium. And he was absolutely lost in the words of that Qawwali. And the, the, and for some reason, I just zeroed in on the words. And I didn't even find it until many years later, but it stayed in my heart. And it was the koala, the koala was saying, and I'm not a koala singer, but he was saying, uh, and you'll see why this is relevant. He said, "Mera jake shab hai nurani, mera jake shab hai nurani, mujhe yaad aate hain, nabi nabi mujhe yaad aate hain, nabi nabi mujhe yaad aate hain, nabi nabi." It was it's a very simple koala, and he was saying that the night of the ascension of the Prophet ﷺ is a mubarak night. And sometimes I just start remembering my prophet. Sometimes I keep remembering him and remembering him. And it was just that refrain over and over again. It's really not a very complicated uh, qawali. And, and I, when, I saw, when I saw, heard the words recounting the Isra and the Miraj, but just this idea of the memory of Rasulullah, so, so deep, that love so deep. And you're seeing this, the words of the qawal, which are reflecting the love of the Prophet Wasallam in the Ummah, through art, but being refracted through a pure soul. This man with Down syndrome, he's completely involved in it, just engrossed in it. It's like the entire world does not matter to him. There's so much going on, anyone can just hit you, step over you, and he's just in another world. And that I felt like, like a, like a prison, you know, of light just went right, and I felt that. And, I, and I, that was such a time-stopping experience for me. And that's at that point I realized that yes, we can read the poetry, study the books, but the love of the Prophet resides in the hearts of his ummah.